very very good morning dear students i am ashto savasti now some topics of fundamentals of crop physiology will be discussed today like mineral nutrition functions and deficiency system uh, symptoms of nutrients and the mechanism of nutrient uptake into the plant we all know that all the minerals that are required into the biosphere that are living organisms enter through the roots of plants the large surface area of the roots and their ability to absorb inorganic ions at low concentration from the soil solution make mineral absorption by plant very effective process after being absorbed by the roots minerals are translocated to the various parts of the plant where they are utilized in numerous biological functions in the process various type of mycorrhizal fungi and bacteria also help in uptake of nutrients by the plants what is an essential nutrient an essential nutrient is defined as one whose absence prevents plant from completing its life cycle or that has a clear physiological role for example nitrogen is required for uh, composition of various type of micromolecules like it is present in proteins it is present in dna and it is present in various type of others enzymes that are made up proteins therefore the presence of nitrogen is very important in the plant if plants are given these essential nutrients as well as energy from sunlight they can synthesize all the compounds they need to normal growth they are uh, can be uh, understood by the experiments of hydroponics where we provide some essential nutrients and plant get energy from sunlight and the whole life cycle of plants is completed in the hydroponic system this is the table of elements that are required for completing the life cycle of the plants here we can see the first three nutrients that are hydrogen nitrogen and uh, no, sorry hydrogen carbon and oxygen these are not considered mineral because they are obtained primarily by the water and carbon dioxide farmers do not give these compounds to the plants because carbon dioxide is a source of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen are taken by water and atmosphere from the plants there are other mac macronutrients nitrogen potassium calcium magnesium phosphorus sulfur and silicon these are known as macronutrients because these are required in large quantity comparatively large quantity when we compare with micronutrients micronutrients are needed in very small quantity these are chlorine iron boron manganese sodium zinc copper nickel and molybdenum these nutrients can be grouped on the basis of their physiological importance in four categories in group first the nutrients that are part of carbon compounds like nitrogen and sulfur as we know that all the students have been uh, familiarized with basic concept of biochemistry and they know that nitrogen is so uh, nitrogen is the constituent of amino acids nucleic acids and sulfur is also component of 
but its proteins, amino acids, and other micromolecules. In group two, the nutrients that are important in energy storage are structural integrity. For example, phosphorus. Phosphorus is essential component of ATP that is known as the currency of energy. Silicon. Silicon is deposited in the cell walls of some plants and it provides the rigidity and elasticity. Boron. Boron complexes with many tiles and it is involved in cell elongation and nucleic acid metabolism. In group 3, potassium, we know it is a cofactor of various type of enzymes and it is also required for maintaining the osmoregulation. Calcium, also uh, very important component of uh, middle lamella that is uh, portion between two cells, two cell uh, wall of two cells. Magnesium, also component of various enzymes, chlorine, manganese and sodium. Group 4, these are nutrients that are involved in redox reaction. Redox means reaction and oxidation reactions. Most of the biological reactions are of this nature and there are many reactions that are involved in photosynthesis, respiration and metabolism are based on reduction and oxidation and these are cofactors of enzymes like iron, zinc, copper, it, these are required in that basis. Now we can see that if particular type of nutrient is not present in sufficient quantity in the plant, it produces some type of symptoms that can be recognized by farmers or by practitioner and the type of nutrient can be provided to the plant for successful completion of its life cycle. For example, we can take the example of phosphorus. Plants are and dark green. In extreme deficiency, it turns brown or black branch color under the leaf. We know that the phosphorus is not very good mobile uh, nutrient as nitrogen is. If the nutrient is not much mobile, the main deficiency symptoms will be appearing on the upper leaves of the plant. When growth is stunted of the plant, but leaves are green, then it is very likely that there is a deficiency of phosphorus. Similarly, when leaves are, are pale and there are no spots and major veins are green, there is probability that there is the deficiency of iron in the plant. But uh, many symptoms are confusing and uh, this is uh, a type of assumption, not much accurate, but anyway it serves very important uh, purpose of the farmers and they can recognize and provide the required mineral and nutrient to the plant for the betterment of. Now we, briefly we can see how these nutrients are absorbed by the plants. There are two types of transport, passive transport, active transport. And I think you are already familiar with these terms. Passive transport is a to a spontaneous or downhill movement of molecules. As it's named that, it does not require any type of metabolic energy. 
Active transport requires the expenditure of metabolic energy in form of ATP or in form of any other type of energy. Active transport in turn is also of two types. Primary active transport that is coupled with expenditure of ATP and secondary active transport that is coupled with expenditure of energy stored in electrochemical potential gradient. Please look at this picture. Uh, you are already familiar with this picture. This is the structure of roots and here we uh, can see the root of water movement, thin plastic and epoplastic pathway and this is the LS of root zone. We can clearly see three types of zones, maturation zone, elongation zone and meristematic zone. There are different types of mechanisms found in different types of cells and different types of cell organelles for uptake of nutrients into the plant. Potassium is accumulated passively by both the cytosol and the vacuole. But when its con concentration is very low, it is taken actively. Sodium is pumped actively out of the cytosol into the extracellular spaces and vacuole. All the anions are taken up actively into the cytosol. Excess protons generated by intermediary metabolism are actively extruded from the cytosol and calcium is actively transported out of the cytosols. In this way we can see that there are different types of mechanisms of nutrient uptake into the plant. Here we can see that there are different type of carrier proteins, channels that are also proteins and pumps that facilitate the uptake of different types of nutrients into the plant cells. Many nutrients absorbed by the roots are carried to the suit by the transpiration stream moving through the xylem. Minerals move both by both type of pathways, epoplastic and symplastic, from epidermal cell to xylem, where they move to the different parts of the plant through the stream of water. Thank you. Please ask if you have any type of question, if you have any type of comment or suggestions.